They're creepy and crawly, Ooh. but they do serve a purpose. So we are going to get up close and personal with some bugs today. I am super excited. We've got UC Riverside entomologist Doug Yaniga joining us today to show off some of these critters. Oh boy, okay, from their entomology research museum. Now Doug, we are both very curious. How does one get into the bug business? Um, it usually starts when, it's, when you're really small. I mean, for me it started when I was five years old. And it's sort of a matter of almost every kid goes through a phase where bugs are just fascinating. And it's usually when you're, you know, like five years old or somewhere in there. And most people get bred out of it. You know, their parents go, oh, that's, you know, that's disgusting. That's it. You don't touch that. Or their friends are, you know, oh, you know, you're weird. You're playing with bugs. And some of us don't get discouraged. And, and you know, we, we wind up sticking with it. That's and, neat. you know, you don't necessarily stay on that thing the whole life, but if you haven't been discouraged from something, then when you go to, you know, when you go to grad school or, or you know, college or something, and you see it like I did, and it was, I was going to be a marine biologist, and the first course that I took when I went as an undergrad was an entomology course, and it's like, hey, this is awesome, especially because, you know, you can find new stuff, and you can find new stuff anywhere. I, I was going to really say, I feel like I maybe skipped out on that phase, or if that phase was there, it was very brief for <laughs> well, me. Well, no, but my kids, my kids had these types of displays in their room. They were mm -hmm. in case they had tarantulas, they had scorpions, they had bugs and moths and butterflies, and so I didn't you know weren't so discouraging much about them. That. That's I, great. I love to encourage them on this, mm -hmm. and I really was surprised that my oldest son Charles wasn't an entomologist, <laughs> and maybe there's still hope for him to become an entomologist. Now you teach, you teach over at uh, UC Riverside. Then um, I'm the I the curate the entomology museum. We the have museum. about f four million specimens there. Um, we don't have public displays, but we've got a lot of stuff for research. Just like it's just like a library for insects, because oh. we you know there's more than 10 million insect species in the world and no one collection can have them all just like no library can have every right. book exactly. and so it's a research collection people will borrow things people will come and, and work with specimens in our collection so we keep all sorts of things from all over the world um, in I, our collection. I mean this is this is fascinating. Mary, I'm looking at these I've never seen these are all bees and apparently there are some fluorescent ones uh, and I we're didn't know at, they could be that colorful. Yeah, yep. these are beautiful. I mean, I'd, I'd almost wear this as a ring if they weren't so scientific. Uh, can you tell us, I mean, these are all from, it looks like a lot of them from, from different countries. We're looking at specimens from Panama. I mean, what's mm -hmm. the difference between a, a, a Panamanian bee, per se, compared to one local here in, in California? One's blue or green, <laughs> and ours are the regular. Right, well, well, those are orchid bees, and we okay. don't have... We only have one species of orchid bee that gets into the U.S., and that's in southern Florida. Um, we have related bees that aren't as colorful in the U.S. Um, you'll notice that some of those sort of look a little bit like bumblebees. Right down here. Um, they are related to bumblebees, but they're a little, they're, you know, they're related. They're not the same. And every place you go in the world will have its own set of insects. It's not just one set of insects that spread over the whole planet. Right. There are some things that we have here in Southern California where it's like only five square miles. In the, right. on the entire planet that a species will live. And so Which this is, is one of the things that you know, we have research collections for, is to keep reference material for things like that. And so our collection will have specimens that nobody else does, and somebody else's collection will have specimens that we don't. This um, is interesting, too. These are moths. We were talking about yeah, this Yeah, those are all moths early. in and, that And box. they're very colorful. Mm -hmm. So we look at the regular gray. Right. Um, we do, have some, we do have some moths along the these brand. lines in the U.S. Um, they're, you know, and mostly the further south you get, you get into more tropical habitats and you tend to get more colorful things in the <sighs> Tell tropics. Tell us some more about some of the other items that you brought. Now, are these samples that you found yourself? Um, like most of the things in those two boxes are things that I collected myself. Um, some of these, like these are specimens of butterflies, glasswing butterflies from Brazil wow. that were donated to our collection in the 1930s. Um, so they haven't they haven't even gotten labeled yet, oh my um, because there hasn't been anybody to man, there hasn't been man, anybody to work on those. Shape, yeah. But wow. you can see there's a, there's a label in there that says you know where in Brazil they were collected and the date and everything like that. So most specimens will get labels that say when and where they were caught. And I would um, imagine even with Zika, you mentioned that they they just live many insects just live in a certain perimeter their whole lives. A lot lives. of them. Ones so that don't are often pests. Can kind of, oh, 
Oh, interesting. So tell me a little bit more about these, because I understand this is going to be quite a threat to our palms. Hmm. Yeah, that's a giant palm weevil. Um, those things originated in India and Southeast Asia, and they are spreading around the world. So they've gotten into the Middle East. These specimens are mostly from Tunisia, where one of our UCR researchers went. Tunisia. And so the museum will, will <laughs> hold specimens that, that are used for research purposes. And this is really important, because we now have records of the giant palm weevil in Southern California. Um, possibly not the same species as, as those, but it's very closely related, and they're potentially really devastating. Um, all of the palm trees in Tijuana right now are being killed mm -hmm. by these weevils, and they're coming across the border there, um, getting into Southern California. So it could be, if we can't figure out a good control measure for that particular weevil, in 20 years we might not have you know, so the palms in the, so in the Southern California yeah. skyline yeah. anymore. So I know basic karate, so if I see a weevil, go ahead and just... Well, if you see one like that, go ahead and, and kill it. And what is it. the difference between the these and the others? Um, the, the other one, species yeah. tend to be darker in color. They tend to be black with a red stripe on them. Those are mostly reddish in color. Okay, um, great. May I? May how, I? And how, <laughs> how would we reach out to you to go to the museum? Um, like I said, we don't have public displays, oh, but right. it's, it's for people, it's for, it's if you're doing research, if you need to see specimens of a certain thing, um, if you need them for art projects and stuff like that, we can make specimens available to you. It's, it's all supervised, and it's, it's just like working with a library you know, for things like that. Thanks so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Great information. Gotta Fascinating. Keep our, can I uh, keep my open. box of weevils? <laughs> I feel like I've earned yeah, this well, from holding it. <laughs> we, we need to have them for reference. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And we want to thank our crew and our, all of our guests today. We want to thank uh, Doug for being on with his bugs. And we also want to thank Anne-Marie Vilcana um, with the Morning Buzz for being yes, on with us. Yes, we we'd like to thank, to thank the thank Foothill Transit. We've got EH Financial, uh, East San Gabriel Valley, ROP. Uh, color color dots. dots, so many, so many people to thank yeah, out there. Yeah, and I don't want to, I don't want to forget one of the other guests that we had too. We had Randall Sokoloff on yes, too. Yes, yes. So that was also great, a great segment. So um, we also want to mention the fact that we are on social media. We're on Twitter and we are on uh, Facebook. What are the other ones? Tweet us, Facebook. Uh, do we have an Instagram yet? We do For have an Instagram. And if you want to reach if you out to see us, these faces. <laughs> you can reach out at info at crowncitynews.com and you can ask us some questions and we'll respond to you. I or you can even that. ask. Yeah, you can, I don't <laughs> always get it right. But thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. This oh, great. Really cool. okay, yeah. So I, some of these things, too. This is okay. just. I, so, those are some donated tiny. specimens. This is how, how tiny they are. Well, it's, uh, I mean, these are tiny. So, that could be on my face at any one point. Hopefully, not that, you know, well, when I'm wouldn't, sleeping. Well, wouldn't make a difference. I mean, so, what are these? Those are little parasitic wasps that lay their eggs inside the eggs of other insects. So, they're used That's as bio, bio control agents. Yeah. Oh. And the ones with the yellow labels are species that we discovered and described at UCR just a few years ago. Oh, really? I would love to. So that's, you know, new species are easy to find in insects. I find a new species every other week. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why I went into entomology. Marine biology, you don't find new fish species right. that often. Right. But I can find and, a new species on, on every trip that I take. Every trip that I take, I can find new species. A small little Ooh. dot that's like the size of my mole. This is a bug. That's crazy. Oh. Okay. Sure. I'm just.